A phone call, a knife, an argument was what it took for one man to murder his own friend in broad daylight. This one phone call put the wheels in motion for happy laughter captured here to turn into one of these men being stabbed to death whilst the other one was on the run for his murder. On the 13th of July 2020, good friends 24-year-old Paulius Petrosoanus, known locally as Polo, and 21-year-old Sean Bull had met up in Heath Town, Wolverhampton. At around midday, the pair are captured sharing a laugh together. The good vibes continue throughout the day when the pair are seen laughing and joking in a convenience store, followed by more smiles at a local bookies a short while later. How was it then only a short time after this that Polo would end up dead and his friend, who he was seen laughing with, would be on the run for his murder? Well, that's because Polo had received a phone call from a person only known as Shanky. We don't know what the call consisted of because reports don't make it clear, although prosecutors would later come out to say that both were involved in the selling of drugs. So prosecutors say that it had something to do with exactly that. What we do know for certain though is that Sean didn't want him taking this call so they got into an argument. Either way, after the call was made, the pair made their way to an Asda supermarket to collect what's been described as an important bag from the car park, which they would later drop off at an address on Lincoln Street in Heath Town. From here, the pair made their way to Polo's girlfriend's flat in Cheville Rise, again in Heath Town, which was a ground floor flat within a four-story block complex. If you're going to stab me, then stab me, are some of Polo's final words to his once good friend, Sean. The argument had intensified in the flat to the point Sean had produced a Rambo-style knife that he had hid in a sheath. You see, once the pair reached the flat, they had argued when they got inside, and Sean was described as being angry. In fact, they both was. Polo's girlfriend describes the scene. Sean appeared in the doorway of the living room and said come. In response to that, Polo walked towards him and shut the door behind him. From here, Polo shouted, if you're going to stab me, then stab me, after Sean had produced that Rambo knife. She says that a scuffle then ensued, followed by heavy breathing. When Polo's girlfriend went to go and check what was happening, possibly to try and calm tensions, she was left with something that would affect the rest of her life. Sean had fled the scene and left his friend to die. Polo was found breathing heavy, slumped over with his knees pulled to his chest. But this was in broad daylight, and to say this was witnessed by a few would be an understatement. I'd just been to the bins at the back of the flat when I heard awful blood-curdling screams, one witness said. Other similar accounts were also given to reporters. When emergency services arrived at the scene at roughly 5.20pm, they were met with a chaotic and emotional scene, with residents trying to help out to keep Polo alive. But sadly, roughly 20 minutes later, on that same summer's day, despite the best efforts of paramedics and the general public, Polo would be pronounced dead after he'd been stabbed through his heart, lungs, and all the way through to the top of his back. You see, the knife nearly went through Polo's whole body. In the moments after the attack, Sean went on the run. He made his way across Wensfield Road, the main road going through Heath Town, towards the general direction of Tumblr Grove. One eyewitness reported seeing Sean holding a machete-style knife, but struggling to carry it because it was so big. From here, he was described as moving in a calm and collected manner, despite what he had just done to his friend, disposing of the knife in a void space between a fence and a wall. 
But believe it or not, it took police several months to find the murder weapon after they had to go through hours and hours of CCTV. Once it was located, it had DNA from both Sean and Polo on it. Now, although it took police several months to locate the knife, the same can't be said for Sean as he was located at an address in Shrewsbury only two days after he went on the run. He was found with a man bag next to him which contained the victim's blood, clearly linking him to the scene. Initially, Sean told police that someone else must have injured Polo as he suffered a seizure and then came across the aftermath. But when detectives had a pile of evidence weighing against him, he later changed his story and said he had been sparring with Polo with knives. He then blacked out and couldn't remember what happened next. Either way, police would go on to charge him with murder and recently, after a trial at Stoke-on-Trent Crown Court, he was found guilty on the murder charge, but he hasn't been sentenced as of yet. And sadly again, this would be the second story within a week or so that I've covered where former friends have gone on to kill each other. In the last story, the friends had been going at it with each other for months until eventually one of them was stabbed to death. But in this case, I find it chilling that within moments, Sean switched up on Polo and stabbed him to death. To think that on the very same day, they'd been sharing laughs with each other, maybe it even spoke about what the future holds, to both friends pretty much losing their lives is just absolutely crazy to me. One is now sadly dead, and the other will more than likely be spending the rest of his life in prison.